Hey Perfectly Pampered Cooks, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be making tortellini turkey meatball soup. It is similar to the last soup that I made but a little more calorie friendly even though it does have cheese tortellini in it. So I'm going to go ahead and move our camera so you can see where I've started. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I went ahead and did some prep work off camera. I've got two carrots that I just peeled. A couple of uh, mini peppers, red, yellow, and orange, garlic, a shallot, and my lovely neighbor brought over some really nice little mini onions. They don't be, don't be fooled. These suckers, when I peeled the skin off, I was crying. But they smell amazing, so we're going to use those. Uh, I've got my pot heating over low. I've just got some regular olive oil in the pot. So I'm going to go ahead and chop up my onions and shallot using my manual food processor by Pampered Chef. And I'm going to press my garlic again, Pampered Chef, garlic press, and that's just going to go into the pot. So this soup is very similar to the other soup that I made, except for the omission of a couple of things. Um, not everyone in my house is a lover of the kidney beans and the cannellini beans. Um, so I tr I'm trying to change it up a little bit um, without losing the flavor. So I'm just kind of helping these along and slicing them down a little bit. And one thing to note, all of the shallot and onion that's going in here, it's going to get split. About three-fourths of it is going to go into the pot and the other quarter is going to actually go into our turkey meatball. An important thing that you should always remember is to carry your flavors throughout your dishes. So whatever I put into the sauce, I try to stick into my meatballs as well. And it's really handy if you're a parent and you have picky eaters, you can just sneak stuff into meatballs. That's what we're left with. It's pretty fine dice. So the majority of this is going into the pot. But we do want to leave some for our meatballs. And that's what I left for our meatballs. So, what's nice too about the manual food processor is you can put the lid back on and it's got a lock. So now I can just set it aside for when I need it for the meatballs. Alright, so we're just going to that around. And while that's going, we're going to add our garlic. And the little bit. Turn him down. I have my garbage bowl right off to the side. So I can just toss my trash in there. Not have to worry about running back and forth to the trash can. Okay, so I'm gonna press our garlic right into the pot. Again, garlic is a preference. If you like a whole lot of garlic, then go nuts. This was a really big clove. And I'm the only one that really, really loves garlic in my family. Normally somebody walks in the kitchen and is like, oh my gosh. How much garlic did you use? But it doesn't bother me. I like onions and garlic. So that went right to the pot. We're going to use that again. I have another clove of garlic that I set aside. That's going to go for our meatballs. Let me just clean this out so I don't have to worry about it. And it's time for meatballs. Into garbage can. I love that this comes with its own little cleaning tool just pop the skin right back up. 
Okay, new tool. This is the Simple Slicer. It's like a mandolin, uh, except for this one doesn't have the stand or the different settings. This is just Simple Slice. So it's got um, four settings. It's got lock, one, two, and three. I'm gonna use setting number two, which is between a really, really thin slice and a really, really thick slice. And I'm just going to slice my carrots right into the pot. And again, this is something you want your veggies to be roughly the same size because it's gonna help you cook faster. When everything is the same size, it cooks faster and it cooks evenly. And I'm also going to save the end of one of these carrots because, again, this is going into my meatballs. I'm going to grate it right into the meatball mixture. And nobody will know because it's grated. Actually, I think I'm going to stick with just one carrot today. I tend to do that with carrots. I always think that I need more than I really do. Alright. So I'm saving this little stub to grate into my meatball mixture. I'm just going to set that aside with the rest of my things. And now I'm going to do the same thing with my peppers. This is also great with the peppers. You can set this on um, setting one, or if you like your, your veggies a little bit thicker, season three, or season three, slice three. And it's great for fajita meat. To make fajita veggies, you can slice them really thin and, you know, just do a quick saute with some of the, maybe the Tex-Mex bread. And you've got instant fajita veggies. It's awesome. And I personally like these little ones because there's less cleanup work to do with them. And they pack a lot of flavor. And most people go for green bell peppers. That's just kind of the common norm. The red and yellow varieties, as and the orange, are actually sweeter than the green ones. And just so you know, this is your food fact for today. All right, we're going to stir all these veggies around. Our onions are starting to get soft. The carrots will not take long because we slice them. So thin, I just want to show you one of their carrots. That is how thin we've got our carrots. So they are going to cook in no time. And here is one of the peppers, just to give you an idea of how thin that is. You know, this is on setting two. Setting one is even thinner. The only thing with setting one is you've got to be really careful especially with delicate things like peppers, or if you, you can use the simple slice to do onions too, if you want to do sliced onions. But you have to be careful with how thin you slice them because if they cook too long, they'll actually start to break down and disintegrate. All right, so to our mixture, I have the Pampered Chef Italian seasoning. It's got a great mix, it smells wonderful basil and rosemary and oregano. It smells great. Again, seasoning is to your taste. I'm going to do about maybe a little more than a tablespoon. Show you. And please feel free to measure. If you want more, add more. If you want less, add less. Just remember, start small because once you add, you can't take away. Oh, it's so fragrant. We're just going to let those kind of hang out for a few minutes and get nice and softened. And once those are softened, we are going to add our base. And the base of our soup is going to be beef stock, tomato sauce, and diced tomatoes, and water. Okay, so our veggies are nice and soft. So we're going to go ahead and add our bases. We've got a cup of water. Three cups of beef 
bra. One 14.5 ounce can of petite dice smoothies with pieces. And then one 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. a little bit and bring it to a simmer for about 10 minutes. And while that's going, we are going to make our meatballs. Do you like my little mix and measure? Also paper tray, by the way. Mungo me measuring cup. It's great to make pancakes in, and it has this handy little lid. So, this is one pound of ground turkey. To our ground turkey, we are going to add the rest of our onion mixture. Oh, those onions, guys, are so strong. I don't mind onion, I don't mind a couple of tears, but wow. Onions in there. We are going to take our carrot as I throw the garlic. <laughs> we're going to take our carrot and we're going to grate some of our carrot in. I said carry your flavors over. If you have kids, hide those veggies if you have to. Um, you can do this with a lot of vegetables, grate it into different things. Um, my oldest is not a huge lover of mushrooms. So I will grate, not even grate, just fine dice some mushrooms and stick them in the meatballs or in the meatloaf. Um, and she never knows. She loves them. Careful with what you do choose to grate in because watery veggies like squash, zucchini, even though they're really good for fillers, they do release a whole lot of water and you don't want soggy meatballs. shown you guys yet so I'm gonna do it now this is our clove of garlic still has the skin on our garlic press just gonna stick it in there and into the bowl. And when we open it up, there's the skin. None of it made it into the meatball mixture. So, because this is extra lean, Turkey, I am going to add just a little teeny tiny smidge of olive oil. I'm also going to add just a little bit of our Italian seasoning, about half a teaspoon. And to bind it, I'm going to add just shy of a fourth of a cup of red crumb. And then I'm going to take off my wedding ring because that is going to have a fit. We are going to mix. You can do this with, with a fork 
or two forks or even a spoon, however you want to do it. I choose hands. Hands are the best tools. If your mixture feels really, really wet, like mine's feeling really wet right now, you can go back and add more breadcrumbs. If you happen to add too much breadcrumbs and your mixture gets really, really dry, crack an egg in there, moisten it up again, or even water. I try not to use egg in my my mixture. It's kind of the standard. Yeah, this needs more breadcrumb. And you can use whatever breadcrumbs you want. These are the ones that I happen to be using. It's all preference. Make your own breadcrumbs with stale bread. Delicious. Make sure you don't overwork your meatballs. Okay, so this is the consistency we're looking for. It's not completely falling apart. It's still moist. So what I like to do with meatballs is take my small cookie scoop from Pampered Chef and scoop out the meatballs one by one and then I'll roll them before I drop them in the soup. But the same principle for when you you bake. If you're doing um, cookies or if you're doing muffins, filling a muffin tin or a cupcake tin, if you use the same size for everything, they all come out really uniform in size and that's kind of what I'm going for here. I'm big on portion control. I rolled 34 little mini meatballs. My soup is at a very light simmer, which is right where I want it to be because I'm going to drop these in. Now you can do this a couple of different ways. You can put them in like this. It's raw. It's going into the hot soup, so it's going to cook in the soup. You can brown these in a pan with a little bit of olive oil beforehand, or you can cook them in the oven 375 for 15 to 20 minutes because they are small. Um, if you choose to brown them beforehand and cook them through either on the stove top or in the oven, be aware that once they're brown you need to let them cool. Set them aside. Don't put them in the soup until you are ready to serve the soup. So I'm just going to attempt to not scold myself with this hot soup and drop these in one by one. Um, this would be a great freezer meal because you can com put everything together ahead of time and freeze it all. Um, you can make the, make the base, like we just said, make your meatballs, brown your meatballs, set those aside, and then buy a package of frozen tortellini, which is the last thing that's going to go in the soup. And the day that you want to cook, you just unthaw your meatballs and your broth, bring your broth to a nice boil, and then when you're ready, throw in your tortellini and your meatballs until they're heated through and you're done. So this is a really good thing to have on hand. All right, I'm going to wash my hands. Sanitary, very important. Alright, so all of our meatballs are in here. I just dropped them so they're not right on top of each other. I'm not gonna stir it. I'm just gonna make sure that they're all nicely covered because you don't want those meatballs to break apart. Now for a light simmer. Alright, so here's our soup with the meatballs in it. It is very low. Um, on my stove, that's at like a two. So for the meatballs to cook through, you're looking at like 15-20 minutes on this setting. And I'm going to put the lid on and just let it go for about 15 minutes and then come back and check it. And when I'm ready to serve it, I'm going to throw my tortellini in there. 
We're only using about a cup to a cup and a half of tortellini because the tortellini does expand. Even if you get the mini tortellini, see that one right there just popped up. That's the meatballs cooking. It's the same thing with the tortellini. Tortellini start to rise. Pasta in general starts to rise when it starts to cook. So we're going to use about a cup to a cup and a half of tortellini. And we're going to put that in maybe five minutes before we serve because we don't want that tortellini to overcook and explode in the soup.